Hello and welcome to this week's coffee vlog. It's now 8am on the 13th of April. Oh my, it's Friday the 13th. That's just perfect. I hadn't even realised that. <laughs> Friday the 13th of April, oh well, that's me done for now. <laughs> After the past few weeks, something's bound to go wrong today. Um, and... Uh, the um, the loan car from the car insurance is supposed to go back today. I had the message about them collecting that yesterday. Um, no apparent indication that my car will be delivered today. It was supposed to be fixed yesterday, but the um, the service dashboard thingy you can log into just said 95% complete. Um, so I don't actually know what's gonna happen. Maybe they'll take away the loan car. I won't get my car back, I don't have to drive the works van, which will be fun. Or maybe I'll get my car back, I don't actually know if they bring my car to me, or if I'm supposed to go and get it from Wakefield where it's been repaired. So, who knows what's going to happen. Um, something to find out really. So, uh, last weekend I didn't do a great deal, um, as is much of weekends at the moment, because I'm just too white from the week to be bothered. Um, so quite a relaxing weekend. I did um, on a Saturday morning um, for some time. Now my boy's been bemoaning the fact that his gaming PC would shut off on certain games. And I was a bit kind of like skeptical about it because stuff crashes sometimes. But then he, he kept saying he was getting CPU over temp when it did it as well. I thought that was odd. So, uh, for the past few weeks, I've been running some, um, you know, temperature monitoring programs just to see what's going on. And when I first set it off, it was actually idling about 70 degrees. It was really hot, the CPU. Uh, and that was totally not right. But then I realised the, um, the Cooler Master case I got, the front grills either side that it draws air through, the mesh is ludicrously fine, and what it built up was like a lid. It's almost like you get out of a tumble dryer, that sort of thick fluff over each of the vents. So they were kind of really blocked up. That was choking it, sucking any cooling air in sort off with. So I cleaned all that out, and I got it down to idling at 50, which is always all right. So I thought, oh, well, that solved the issue. Um, but then he said it, it was still doing it on certain games. Um, so in the end I decided I must have got some bunk thermal paste because um, I always get arctic silver because arctic silver is like supposed to be the best thermal paste. Uh, but I did remember I just found arctic silver on eBay and gone for the best price one because that's what I do generally. Uh, and I did think well maybe, you know, eBay being eBay, there's someone doing some known brand rubbish thermal paste but managed to get thermal arctic silver thermal paste stickers over it uh, to you know make it a clone of it uh, it's not unexpected I don't suppose so I got some more arctic silver some in fact some arctic silver m5 thermal paste supposed to be the top of the range from Amazon uh, from a seller that had millions of reviews uh, that were all positive. So I thought that's going to be me guaranteed getting some good pace. So last Saturday morning, uh, disconnect the whole gaming PC, take the side panel off, and then remove the um, heat sink and fan. That was interesting um, because, not surprisingly, the thermal paste is baked in place. But then I didn't really know. I kept looking up references of how to get the things off. It says um, twist clockwise and anti-clockwise to break the seal. You want to like lever it up, but I was conscious of the fact that the the CPU, the actual chip that is the central processing unit, isn't held in that greatly. And I've seen horror stories of people pulling pulling out this and the CPU's attached still with all the pins bent because it hasn't released properly from the socket and, and that's an expensive bit of kit 
Uh, you know, CPU is really 150 quid or something, so you don't really want to knack it up. Plus, you might knack the motherboard, to be honest. Uh, so I was being very cautious. Um, but turns wiggle it clockwise, anti-clockwise, releases it, that released it. Uh, thermal paste had gone like gooey, bludgy, sticky. Ugh. So I removed all that, which took some stripping off. Um, and then um, went for an X pattern to put it back on with. I found another guide and someone had actually scientifically done like 12 different patterns of thermal pastes and used a Perspex thing to compress it on and see how the coverage went. Uh, and all the different patterns, because normally say like a pea-sized dot in the middle, uh, actually doing an X across the, um, the CPU gave the best coverage. So went with that, reconnected it all up, um, booted it up, and it was still idling at about 58, 50 degrees, 48, 50 degrees, which I thought, well, I thought it'd be cooler um, because I'd done something to it. So I was kind of disappointed in that. So I messed about with a few bits and pieces and I thought, well, I'll try and do a geek bench again because that maxed it out about 95 degrees geek bench when it was doing its uh, pressure test. So I ran geek bench and it only got to 60 um, and it, it got to 95 before. So um, the conclusion for me that was it worked. Whatever was up with it was most likely the thermal paste wasn't good or it hadn't. Connected. I mean, there was loads of thermal paste. It wasn't like I had to put enough on, um, but it just wasn't giving a good um, thermal connectivity between the CPU and the heatsink for whatever reason. Probably because it was rubbish thermal paste. <coughs> so that did take me um, quite a lot of time, just because I was being careful, to be honest, when I was taking the thing apart. Uh, and no problem since everything is tried has run fine and it doesn't even get above 65 now where it was in the 95s and then once it gets 100 that's when it shuts off so so that was good um back to work full week at work yay um yeah it, it's been super busy again actually it's um it's really picked up you know that little lull where just before easter there was a little Burst before Easter, then after Easter it kind of went a bit sort of quietish, and then it seems to have just gone all mad again. So uh, it's all go. Plus, we've had, my goodness, a lot of green coffee, and four pallets came in uh, in total, uh, averaging 600 kilos of pallets. So Getting on two and a bit tons of coffee in this week. Uh, a lot of Algrano new stuff that needs listing. More work. Um, and uh, yeah, roasting wise, this has been going flat out um, this week and the smaller one as well. We're just trying to roast to keep up. Uh, and you know, we've got both these going. A lot of the time, or this is on in the morning and that one's on in the afternoon, whichever suits. Uh, so yeah, it's busy, busy, um, work-wise, keeping us going. And uh, it's good to see what's going to happen uh, in the future. So, um, other than that, not done a lot on Hive, missed Sublime Sunday last week, I didn't have a lot of photos to share and I wasn't really in the mood. Uh, we'll try and do one maybe tonight and then do this tomorrow, see what happens. Um, I know crypto's down at the moment, all markets are down, uh, there's obviously everything going on in the world at the moment is making Markets crash, so um, I don't know, and that's not good, but it's not like it's not on, it's happening everywhere, so we'll see what happens in future. So, uh, yeah, so that's me done. Have a good weekend and week next week. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Shibden blend today. And it's good. Mm. 
Should be done by now. Yeah. So have a good week, weekend, week next week, and I'll catch you in next week's Gogger Vlog. See ya.